Maybe you've practiced a lot of attraction before and you didn't get the results that you want. You ended up frustrated or kind of sort of work, but not as great as you wanted it to be. In this video, we're gonna talk about what are the three most unknown steps really advanced to actually create what we want from in our mind so that we can hold it in our hand or that we can see it in our lives. I'm Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com and you may have watched The Secret, you know, you, you, you may be familiar with the law of attraction and what I'm going to share here is something that will give you a perspective shift so you can see what you want in your hand. So let's go. Step number one, everything is really two things. Huh? What? Everything is really two things? We live in a world of polarity, right? We live in a world of equal and opposite. We live in a world where there's positive and negative. We live in a world where there's an equal and opposite force happening to every single thing. So what does that mean about the law of attraction? What that means is there's an equal and opposite force to every thought that you're having, meaning everything is really two things. So you may desire more money, but in reality, you think you're practicing the law of attraction because you're thinking about that all the time. But really, all you're doing is thinking about the absence of money. You're noticing that it's not there, but you want more of it. So you can want something in your life, but you can be coming from a place of lack. So it's all about where am I actually coming from? So it's a question you can ask yourself, where am I coming from? So just think about what your biggest desire or dream or goals or the things that you've been focusing on trying to manifest and create in your life and ask yourself, where am I coming from? Because you could want more money, but you're aware of not having enough. And, and, and you may unconsciously feel a level of stress. You may want a certain relationship, but you're aware that that romantic relationship hasn't shown up yet. It's like, where is it? Is, is this working? Is this not working? Everything is really two things. You can want world peace or you can always focus on how there's this thing happening and this bad thing happening. I mean, that's why Mother Teresa said, I'm not coming to your anti-war rally. Let me know when you do a pro-peace rally and I'll be there. She knew the secret. She knew that you have to be in the state of what you actually want. And what I see is the most common problem that people face is that they're always focused on not having it. They want more money, yet they're moving around chaotically trying to figure out how to get more of it. So the question is, does your thinking control your bank account? Does it really? Because most people's bank account controls their thinking. Think about that. They want more money, but then the bank account that says not that much controls their thinking. Or they want that romantic relationship, yet the fact that what they see with their physical eyes doesn't show them yet. Get this. You don't even see with your eyes. You see with an image reflector at the back of your eyes because everything is light and vibration. So there's a certain vibration in front of you and it's sending a signal, an electrical signal into your eyes that's sending a signal to your brain that are checking for cells of recognition to see if you know what that object is so that your brain can, in, in your mind can categorize it as something. Weird to think about, but you're not actually seeing. You're going to cells of recognition to see if you know it. So if you look out for that, whatever it is that you want in life and it's not there, cells of recognition are saying based off of the past, that's not there anymore. So the first thing is to recognize everything is really two things. You can focus on the presence or the absence of what you want. And it all comes where we come from. Number two is you got to start living in the state of the wish already fulfilled. If you notice, people use a law of attraction a lot, where they use positive thinking a lot, where they say, I tried to be positive, I tried to be optimistic, or it's just, you know, they are positive, maybe it's just not working as well as they want it to work. And the problem is, we're always thinking in future tense. So you have to step out of the future, and you've gotta step out of the past, because Generally, we're either creating from the future or the past. 
We're looking into the future and saying, I hope this will show up. I really would like this to show up. This is what I want. Let Remember, that means that you're in a place of lack already. Or we're looking at creating the future based off of the past, based off of this thing that didn't work out for me before. Get this, your nervous system has no idea what's real and what's not real. Your subconscious mind, psychologists tell us we have 65,000 thoughts in a day, 95% of which are unconscious, coming from our subconscious mind, meaning we're not conscious that it's happening. It's programmed, it's conditioned thoughts, it's conditioned behavior. That's what's running most of our lives. And the crazy thing is, your nervous system and subconscious doesn't know what's real and not real. Most people are thinking, I hope this thing shows up. I really would like this thing to show up. This would be great if this thing shows up. But the reality is, what type of energy are you in in that place? The absence of what you want. So the only way to ever change something is by becoming it in this moment. Think about it. You live out a certain reality, whether it's true or not. And the perfect example of that is, you know, when we're little and we think there's a monster under our bed. I remember being a kid yelling, mommy, 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 there's a monster under my bed. What am I going to do? Right? And then my mom runs into the house, runs into the bedroom and she's like, pulls me out. It's the second or third time it's happened that week. She makes me look under the bed. I realized there's no monster under my bed, but it felt real. Physiologically, it was real. My hands were sweaty. My heart was beating. I couldn't sleep. I was having a physiological reaction. It was my reality because your nervous system and your body will create whatever is the most emotionalized thought in the moment. It's the same thing, right? Have you ever thought that there was a burglar in your house or something like that? And you like grab the baseball bat or you grab a light post and you're about to hit the burglar, but then you find out it's your dog or find out it's your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your son or your mom or your dad, or no one's there at all and you were just hearing things, but your hands were sweaty, your heart was beating. And if you're anything like me, when I was in sixth grade, I called the police because I actually thought there was a robber in my house. There wasn't one, the police came, turned out to not be true, but I thought it was true. I still, even after the police came, I still felt scared. I was still looking out the window to be sure. Well, what's happening is your nervous system your subconscious mind, your entire reality isn't created off of what's happening around you. It's created off of what you give the most emotional credence to. So if you can live out a negative reality, people do that all the time also with like, they think their relationship's going to be over. They think they're going to get fired and da, 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 da. And they live out this reality and it never happens. If you can do that with something negative, why can't you do that with something positive? It all starts with seeing yourself already as the thing that you want to be. Act as if, if you already had that embodied in your nervous system and you felt that it was already reality of whatever it is that you wanted in your life, more happiness, more love, this opportunity, if you felt complete and you weren't in a state of, I hope that this arrives, I would like this to arrive, that seems like those are positive thoughts, but in the reality, they're actually lack thoughts. They're affirming a reality of not having something. So the practice is, can you start to use the present tense? I'm so happy and grateful now that whatever your desire is, whether it's more money, I'm so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities and I'm seeing it show up and I have this awesome computer to watch this and I paid for my electricity bill. I do actually have prosperity. I just, you know, sometimes I overlook it or, or I'm so happy and grateful now that I have awesome, amazing people in my life. And that begins with myself and this YouTube community that I'm around. And you know what? This person person is actually pretty great to me. Sometimes I don't always see that. And we start, notice how that is totally different. It's changing your nervous system in the present moment. So eliminate the future, eliminate the past, decide right now you're going to program your subconscious mind and your nervous system for what you want now. It's already here. It already exists. Step number three, your emotions tell you whatever you're creating. You may be thinking, well, all of that was amazing, awesome. I totally am starting to understand and that was really interesting, but how, what, how, how, right? How, how do I do it? The first step is you have a guidance system that's telling you 
what you're creating in every single moment. The problem for most of us is we're in such a high state of unawareness, of unconsciousness, that we don't even know how we feel. We have no idea how we actually feel. Get this, the word emotion, emotion. It's the letter E, motion. What does that mean? Energy in motion. Your, whose, yours, your energy is in motion at all times, and that's your emotion. Well, what creates your emotions? Your thoughts create your feelings, your emotions, and what do your emotions do? They create who you are, they create the actions you do or do not take, and the things that do or do not show up in your life. So at any moment, you can look and you can say, what am I thinking right now? I know because of how I feel. So if you even get away from the whole idea of the law of attraction, I want this thing to show up and I want this thing to show up, and you say, how do I feel right now? And you can notice, do I feel excitement? Do I feel gratitude? Do I feel stress? Well, I've been thinking about I want this in my life. Why would I feel stress? Because maybe you're focused on the absence of it. It's an easy thing to do. So our guidance system, our emotions, our energy in motion is telling us what energy is in motion back towards us? What energy in motion towards you? So all you simply do is check in on a regular basis. How do I feel right now? Where am I coming from right now? And when you start to become more aware, you can catch yourself before the thought pattern ends up taking you away for two, six, eight hours of the day where it's just eh, so-so, or you're kind of sort of frustrated or you're not in a state of bliss or joy or gratitude or excitement, you can catch yourself. You have the ability to decide what your emotions will be and you have the ability to become aware of what they are, therefore noticing what it is that you're thinking. And when you're aware that you're the one who actually gets to see in which direction you're driving, you can always put yourself back on course, so to speak. And that's the real advanced secret that we forget. My feelings tell me what I've been thinking, which will tell me what I'm creating in my life. I'm Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com. I hope you enjoyed these advanced tips to use the law of attraction. Basically, when we get in a state of assuming the feeling of the wish already fulfilled, we do that all the time with negatives in our lives. Just think about it. We do that all the time. Why can't we do that with positives? We have this beautiful, marvelous, miraculous mind with a power that's so great, it's greater than any superpower, super computer, super galactic powers that ever existed. It truly is. But we haven't learned how to harness it to start to live out certain realities and change ourselves on a physiological level by assuming the feeling of the wish already fulfilled by living as if something were true instead of living out of the absence or out of the lack. And we can check in at all times to see what's going on. That's the real power. So if you dig this, make sure you press subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification in the corner. Comment in your favorite part and let me know what your biggest takeaway it is. It's my favorite part of these, so I look forward to reading your comment and seeing you now a part of the community. Thank you for being here. I'll see you on the next video.